all systems go. Clear for liftoff. What's going on, everybody? Happy Wednesday. Hope you guys and gals having a good day so far. Rio and I are in for a treat tonight, as are all of you if you're playing this eight-game NBA slate. I like how it's broken up. We have a nice two-hour window, both FanDuel and DraftKings, eight, eight games on the slate, two games at 7 p.m. Eastern, two games at 7.30, one game at 8, and three games at 10 o'clock. So one-hour window, got to grind, two hours off, then you get those last three games bunched together. Showdown content, of course, we will have on the site. Bring my man Rio. How you doing on this fine Wednesday afternoon? I'm doing good. Last show of the week for me, then heading out to Arizona tomorrow. So I got, got my guys, Ham, Title, and uh, Nate's going to get you guys covered over there. But, yeah, good slate here. Just literally just published the uh, slate plan right before we went live. And, um, yeah, I mean, I'm looking forward to tonight's slate. A lot of It's one of those slates where you wish you had – five to six point guard slots tonight because there's so many good options tonight in the point guard position. But yeah, I'm looking forward to tonight. So you got the 888 tonight. I know we got some members in there. So good luck to everybody playing in that one. Yeah, for sure. Um, first or last in that one, baby. 250K up top would be nice for sure. AZ Bound Go Collect says, you bet. Uh, we'll see Rio and Jasmine right here on Saturday. Very excited for that. You guys have a nice trip. Ben's in here. Jordan, Go Collect. Alex Hahn, William, yeah, you mentioned, shout out Ham, shout out Nades. We will be taking content over for Rio. We will be enjoying for the, enjoying the weekend for the most part. So if you're in Discord, you won't see him in there 24-7 as much. He's going to be trying to win that million dollars. Richie Small is time for the winners. Yes, sir. Man, it is a crazy slate, though. There's a billion Q tags. Like, and Giannis being ruled out really doesn't do too much for this slate. It's kind of crazy how I see it. You mentioned the point guard position. I mean, the game of the night for sure is Sacramento-Toronto. When talking ownership, um, the prices, just so many missed prices in that game. That's where value will come from. Sabonis as well. Any other broad slate overviews? I mean, so much is going to change up throughout the night. That's why you need to be at ShippingNation.com. Projections updated throughout the night. Does something change on your core reports, cash report, et cetera? It's updated. Um, but we'll do the best we can now. But, yeah, besides a bunch of Q tags, any – other injuries and point guard being good. Any other broad slate overview before we go game by game? Uh, no, not too much. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm kind of in agreement with where ownership's standing right now. We did just get uh, the news right before we went live. Um, Anthony Simons got downgraded to questionable, so that that's going to throw another wrench into the slate uh, with, with that game being the late the late lock window. So, yeah, we'll try to break it down as best we can, but – yeah, I don't know. I mean, there's so many good point guard options tonight. It's gonna that's really the make or break position tonight. I think you're gonna have to get that one right. So do our best to pinpoint the guys that we like tonight. Cool. Let's do it. Again, like button helps us out a ton. Subscribe button helps us out. And if you do want to join us at the nation, PGA locks in the morning. Tambo Hoop just did a show. MMA this weekend. Of course, NBA, MLB will be here before you know it. What eight days away? So crazy. Use that promo code Mayo. T Mayo, shout out Mayo. Get you 10% off any package. Code Mayo, 10% off. Game by game, Rio. Start with the first one of the night. Very low total to kick it off. Cleveland Cavaliers, Miami Heat. We have a, what, a 205 total. Cavs, one and a half point favorites. Injury report in this one. Yeah, a bunch of injuries, of course. Miami side, Jimmy, Bam, uh, Jovic. What, Bam was a midday downgrade, I believe. And Jimmy participated in shoot around. So that's worth noting. We will get this news before lock. They're still without Tyler Hero. Cavs side, no d Mitch, no Strews, no Dean Wade. I'll throw it to you. Yeah, obviously really low total. I don't want much exposure in this one, especially with Q-Tags. A lot of Q-Tags on this slate. I don't want to lock myself in too much of this game. Um, but I do like some Indiana Detroit that locks right away to start. But Levert's the only one that's grading out as a solid value for me. He does have that shooting guard eligibility. That you said you like point guard, point guard, shooting guard, poly playing that shooting guard if you do play them. Um, but yeah, I guess talk about Bam and Jimmy Q tags and what it does in this one, but I don't like it too much. 
Yeah, I mean, the spread would probably tell me these guys play, but it's never good having the midday downgrade with uh, Bam. I believe he's dealing with a back injury. He's been kind of dealing with that for a little bit now. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely possible both these guys sit just because, um, I mean, like standing standings-wise, I think that Miami doesn't really care too much where they wind up in, in the playoff race. I mean, I think that they – they just want to go into the playoffs as healthy as they can be. So pushing these guys in, I, I wouldn't say this is a meaningless game, but um, I don't think that it's like a must win game for them. So I, I would not be surprised to see them sit. Obviously we'll have that news. Uh, I think as it stands right now, the heat are pretty much a full X out for me. If Bam and Jimmy were to be in, if those guys were out, then we're looking to Caleb Martin, Terry Rozier, Jaime Hawkins, uh, Haywood Highsmith, Thomas Bryant, I believe, would be a really, really good value starting for um, for Bam Adebayo. And that would make the matchup a lot easier for Jared Allen as well. I mean, these these Cleveland guys aren't really getting much ownership, and I think the matchup is not great right now with Bam in. But if he were to be out, Jared Allen looks pretty good at 8.1K. Uh, and then I'd really just want to be focusing on the guys that are going to be taking three-pointers for the – the Cleveland side of things because Miami really good interior defense, but three point funnel as of late. So I think Garland would be pretty good at 7.8 K Levert is already going to be a pretty solid play at 7.1 K. Um, I, I guess these like value guys, just there's no way you're getting to them over any of these uh, Detroit or Toronto guys. So um, yeah, I mean like uh, Sam Merrill, Isaac Okoro, George Niang, the matchup suits them pretty well for, uh, for their play styles, but I'm not looking to play them over any of these Toronto guys. So as of right now, pretty much a full cross-off game outside of Karis LeVert and then a little bit more interest if the Miami injury news uh, shakes out the way we hope it to. What about uh, if Bam was out and Jimmy was in, Jimmy at AK? Ownership still will be low. Price is solid. Can you get to Jimmy? Close close game? Yeah, I wouldn't mind. I mean, he's uh, kind of, I mean, he's had that stretch where he was looking like playoff Jimmy, kind of come back down to earth a little bit as of late, I believe. Some of that has to do with uh, Terry Rozier's role kind of increasing. But, yeah, AK would be a really good price tag for him. He'd have a ton of usage. Um, probably see the rebounding rates increase as well if no BAM. But I, I just think that I would rather get to the value options because I just like too many of the spend-up options tonight to be playing a, a, a mid-tier Jimmy when, like, the ceiling for him, I would say, is probably, like, 50. I think that would be really good on the slate, but not what I'm looking for. The Rosen esque is what you're saying. I got it. Yeah, I I agree. Um, yeah, pretty much Levert. And I like your call though. If Bam was out, like talking about the other side, Jared Allen, his ownership wouldn't really change. People don't th think of it. They think of if Bam's out, Thomas Bryant, etc. Which 4K is a good price tag if he did start. But yeah, Allen at eight one, no ownership. I mean, no ownership. And you mentioned today, center's a solid position. I think for sure. There's the two in the Toronto game, John C. Porter. So bonus. Other than that, though, it's not great. Like you said, point guard's your favorite position. So I wouldn't mind playing a Jared Allen, maybe one of those other two, if Bam was out. So I like that shout. I got four teams today, something I'll be considering, and at least one of them. Um, and people just don't like locking themselves into too much in these first couple games, especially with three games at 10 and a lot of Q tags. So eat some chalk, mix in a low piece or two. Allen's got that upside to break his slate. That's how I see it. Let's keep it rolling. Next game. The second of two that locks at seven Eastern, Indiana Pacers, Detroit Pistons. We have the Pacers, or a 235 and a half total. Pacers, 10 and a half point favorites. No injury news, or Doug McDermott's questionable for the Pacers. Doesn't mean much. Detroit side, uh, Fentecchio is questionable, which means a good bit. Azur Thompson out, Isaiah Stewart out. Yeah, Detroit side is pretty interesting, and that Fentecchio news means a decent bit. I already think Cade is a solid play, 7-9. He's going to come with some ownership, though. That's why I was talking, like, Jimmy is a pivot. Obviously, different positions right there. But Cade looks really solid on paper to me. Just high pace game, good matchup, not much defense. Injuries on the Detroit side. And the Pacers side, too. I mean, Tyrese, baby, you're talking about getting these point guards right. Yeah. This feels like the night. This feels like the night he owes me a big one. I don't know about the lock button, but I'm definitely going to get some Tyrese. Talk about uh, – I mean, this game looks like some goodness. Talk about Fontecchio injury and that uh, Detroit side to start, though. Yeah, I'll start with the Fontecchio stuff because it does have a pretty big impact in terms of how the rotation is going to shake out. 
I mean, you look at it, Detroit's going to be very, very thin tonight. Um, no Quentin Grimes, no Isaiah Stewart, two pretty big rotation pieces. Obviously, Isaiah Stewart is a starter, um, so him being out. And then Tosh Gibson, who got the start in the second half for uh, Stewart when he got injured, is also questionable with the hamstring injury. I mean, Tosh is 72 years old with the hamstrings, like hamstring injury, so I would expect him to probably sit too. Um, That's why so I didn't now even mention it because it was Taj, but yeah, I mean he did get minutes, so yeah. yeah. So I mean now if you're if you're telling me that Taj is out too and they have no and Simone Fontecchio if he gets ruled out with a with a toe injury, which is I mean we've seen a lot of guys miss times with the similar injury, um, so he's not really a lock to to be playing. So if both Taj and Fontecchio miss, we're talking about a lot of minutes out of Stanley Amude, who got the start last time, been getting talked up by uh, Monty Williams a good bit. And then Tosan Ev Evbowam, um, he was with the Grizzlies, I believe, for for a ten day contract. Um, I mean, he would probably see a ton of minutes as well. Saw eighteen minutes against uh, against Boston last game. Yeah, I mean, like they're going to be really thin. So I think you'd have to have some interest in these guys. Even Troy Brown at three K, possible start candidate. Um, we kind of know what Troy Brown is at this point in his career. He's, he's been, you know, he's decent, but uh, probably could do a lot worse. Um, I think How that much if, would you if, be comfortable locking yourself into is the first game of the night if like Fontecchio, Taj, and them were all out. I mean, if if Simone and Taj are out, I think I would probably want one of Amude or Tosan, depending on who's starting, just because I think that the minutes can be really big for those guys. Um, I mean, Amude played what thirty one minutes last, thirty four minutes against Boston last game. Didn't really do too much, but um, much softer matchup going against Indy tonight. So I would, yeah, I'd have some interest in these guys and. Yeah, I'm not sure how much the ownership changes. He signed this morning at Metu the 10 day. He's not playing today though, eh? Or is he? Um, I'm not sure exactly. I, yeah, I don't see him. I, um it was literally this morning, so I don't know if like he was already in like he probably has to fly that I doubt he probably plays, but he did yeah. sign. Yeah, this is I don't know. I actually don't know exactly how that works if you're allowed to play like the day you sign or or if he's been in contact with them for a while, if they knew they're gonna sign him. So I don't um I don't exactly know too much, but that is something to keep in mind. I think we'll probably get the uh an update whether he's available or not before the game starts, is what I'm guessing. But um yeah, so I, I think that they Detroit side is pretty interesting if the if the team is really thin tonight. But starting with the guys up top, because I think that this is a really good spot for uh, really two positions in particular on both sides because both these teams play very similar styles of defense where um, pretty bad interior defenses, both towards the bottom of, uh, of the league in pick and roll defense, um, Pacers being dead last in pick and roll and ISO defense, whereas the Pistons are bottom three in pick and roll defense uh, to ball handlers and pick and roll, uh, dead last to pick and roll roll men. Um, so that really just gets me on the point guards and, and centers in this one. So I have a ton of interest in Tyrese Halliburton tonight, even with the uh, current form he's in, obviously not shooting well. He's been kind of in the in the, the headlights of the social media world lately, talking about uh, the gambling aspect of sports and talking about seeing a sports psychologist saying that he's struggling to shoot right now, hasn't really gone through a streak like this. But yeah, I mean, he's shooting 17% from three-point range over the last nine games. Not too good, but yeah, I, li I like the matchup for him a ton. Still, I mean, the, the fantasy scoring has been there, 44 plus DK points in five of the last seven games. His role is coming back over seven minutes of touch time over the last seven games as well. Um, yeah, I really like to match him. Uh, I'm always kind of on the side of getting away from Pascal Siakam and ownership. He seems to always be around 20%. Just he never really has the ceiling to beat you. Um, of course, it's going to, as we say, that's like DeMar. He's going to do it tonight, but... He did um, it last time. Pull Siakam up, pull, did? Pull, yeah, pull up the game log. Guess the time when I was shitting on him. 54 was it the, piece. the Brooklyn or, game? Yeah, 54 piece. The Rosen S. Who was it we said before? Uh, Jimmy? Jimmy's putting up yeah. 52. <laughs> it might not be enough to know on tonight's slate because there's some pretty good value options and a lot of good spend up. So that's not a lock to be optimal, I don't think. But I, you'd obviously be happy with that if you got 50 from Siakam. Matchup is a lot better with no uh, Isaiah Stewart in there, but I'm really just looking to Tyrese and Miles Turner. Um, Turner's third in the league in pick and roll, roll men scoring this season. Pistons dead last in that uh, in that category, like I mentioned earlier. So I, I like Miles Turner. He's kind of shown a little bit more of a willingness to be uh, more of a scorer around the basket rather than hanging around the three point line. So 
Don't mind him. I think Aaron Neesmith, not really the spot for him, but the price tag is really good at 5K. And then um, always have TJ McConnell in your player pool just because he's got huge upside coming off the bench. Put up 37 and a half in just 18 minutes against this team earlier. Uh, love the love the spot for guys that score and pick and roll. So I think TJ has a really big upside. And then, um, yeah, Cade and Jalen Duran, two of my favorite plays in, in this game. Um, 7.9K for Cade, really good. Best possible matchup for him. He is uh, sixth in the league in pick and roll scoring this season. Um, just not too sure what the minutes are going to be like for him coming back. Got the night off the other night, obviously with the with the back to back, but he's had a couple of days off. So if we can get 34 to 36 out of him, I think he's got huge 55 to 60 point ceiling in this game. If it's 32, then he's probably topped out like 50, 55 or something like that. Um, but yeah, I really like the spot for Cade. And then Duran, I think that he has a really good game tonight. 6.9K, good for him. Much more uh, rebounding upside with Isaiah Stewart out with Taj Gibson possibly missing in this one. So yeah, I like those two guys a lot in this game. Is uh, Duran or Miles Turner and then Cade and or Tyrese if you had to pick? And then would there be any merit if like, if you played Cade playing Duran or vice versa? Um, to that, if you're deciding, because like I don't know how many during during uh Miles Turner's teams I'm gonna have, like Sabonis and Jante definitely look strong. At least one of them, they'll probably be on a lot of my teams. I can definitely see myself playing one of these guys though. So, like six nine, six six, do you have a price or do you have a preference? Obviously, there's one K difference with Tyrese Cade, but I think Cade both are gonna get ownership. I don't know, so I won't say that. Do you have a lean on on the, those one do ones? Um, I think I side with the Detroit guys. Um, I like the upside a little bit better for Duran than uh, than Turner in this spot. And then I think price adjusted Cade is is a probably a better point per dollar play than than Halliburton. Um, very similar upside. We haven't seen like the big 60, 70 pointer from Halliburton like we saw earlier this season. So um, not to say he can't do it tonight, but I would. I mean, I still I really like Halliburton tonight, but comparative to to um, Cade with the price tag, I would take the 1K difference, I think. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. I do like TJ a lot, though. The minutes are capped, which he hates. So the upside's sort of capped. But, man, the floor feels pretty – I say that there's obviously 12, 17s in there. But his use is 24, 30, 29, 23, 25, 34. Like, it's north of 20 almost all game or almost all these games. Obviously, he has stock upside. I definitely like TJ at 4 or 5. How would like TJ compare to some of those Pistons guys if uh, if Fontecchio was out? Um, like first of all, like Sasser, I think you'd still like TJ over Sasser, but I know there's yeah. some price difference with that really long Ethan, even even name, um, and then uh, Umidi or whatever. But uh, Umidi's strong at three nine, but I guess that's more of a question: TJ or Umidi? Um, if Fontecchio was out? Uh, probably Amude just for the uh, shooting guard small forward eligibility. Kind of would prefer to pay down at those positions just with the strength of the point guard spot tonight. I don't know if I want to uh, – I don't know if I want to get to TJ when I, ha I can get to Cade or Tyrese or to uh, Fox, Damian Lillard, those types of guys. I do think it is an interesting – like people are going to go Jante and some of those Raptors. War is going to be popular for some – some savings. Keanu Ellis is going to get some too. I do think TJ's ownership has to be capped to an extent. He's going to get some, but he's a strong play. It's just like you keep saying, that position is really strong. Last thing on this game, uh, your boy Neesmith, guard forward eligibility, low owned, semi low owned. What's your read on uh, What's your read on him? Yeah, I normally like getting some Neesmith in games where I think he could put up a big shooting night, uh, especially from the three point range, like. I mean, I guess he did it against Orlando, but like the Pacers are, I believe, top of the league in catch and shoot defense this season. But it's just because their rim defense is so weak that teams just don't really shoot much on them because they can get to the rim. So, yeah, I, I just don't really know if, that, if this is the spot for Neesmith. But, um, I mean, he should play a ton of minutes, so he's got that going for him. But, yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't really think that the huge upside that I want from Neesmith normally in better matchups is there tonight. I'm just trying to get some like Caruso play. You had a Neesmith, one of those big gays too. Uh, one of these, one of these games, I'm looking for a little. Gym. We'll find yeah. some. Yeah, let's keep it going. This game, I don't know, not a game I love too much in terms of DFS. 
Milwaukee Bucks, Boston Celtics, big big spread again. Boston 10 and a half point favorites, 225 and a half total. No Giannis for the Bucks, for the Boston, for Boston, Jalen Brown, Drew, and Hauser, all questionable. So very important news on the Celtics side. I guess, yeah, I'll throw it to you on this. I mean, Dane, you're talking about point guards. My thoughts, I know I prefer Tyrese, who I think is going to probably be a little lower owned than Dame. I prefer him for cheaper. I prefer Cade for cheaper. We're talking TJ, who I really like for value. To be honest, I don't love Dame in this spot. As big dogs, if they get blown out, he's going to be one of the first to get pulled. And, man, like if Drew plays against the pick and roll, you talk about a lot, they can be beat. But, like, hey, Drew ain't going to want – Drew likes Milwaukee. He didn't want to go. He liked Giannis. I don't think he's going to try and let Dame – go out there and just absolutely nuke on them. But there's no Giannis. Like, the defense isn't going to let Dane beat him today is how I see it. 9.1K, I think there's a lot of better options. He's coming with ownership. I'm just not going to really get there. I like Bobby at 6K, power forward, center eligible. Like, if I don't think Dane gets it going, they're going to need some scoring. Bobby's going to get some low, like, low touches. He can step out. I think Bobby's one, yeah, 54-piece last game, 30% usage. Like, I love Bobby in this spot. Other than that, though, if these Boston guys, I'll throw it to you on this. Do you have reads on these Boston guys? Because if they're out, of course, Tatum becomes a good play. Porzingis would be interesting if multiple of these guys were out. But, yeah, take it away. Um, yeah, I mean, you. I think you laid out pretty good. There definitely is some downside risk to these guys with the blowout concerns, uh, with obviously the Boston Celtics being a really strong defense. You, you pretty much said it best. I do like to attack the Boston guys with guards. Um, mainly with ball handlers, guys that are going to be scoring and pick and roll. It's definitely Dame's game. Um, like Celtics bottom six pick and roll defense this season, so they could still get beat even with Drew Holiday and Derek White out there. Uh, in terms of the uh, injury stuff, I think Hauser is probably the most likely to miss. doesn't really change too much. I think that um, Jalen Brown's injury probably a little bit less of a concern as Drew's. Drew's dealing with the, the AC joint sprain, I believe. So definitely some – a little bit of concern there. If he does miss, then probably gets a gets much better for Damian Lillard. They probably want to start Peyton Pritchard, I would guess, just because he's been playing so well lately. They can uh, just kind of slide everybody up a little bit. But, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm still pretty into Dame here. Just obviously with no Giannis off the, on the court this season, he's seen a really big usage uptick, up 7.3% on his season average. Um Leads the team in usage, has 51 DK points per 36 minutes with Giannis off the court. But he's also averaging 54.2 DK points in four games without Giannis this season. I think I kind of like him more than Tyrese. I think I like him then a little bit better than some of these guys. Probably not better than Cade just for the the price discount on Cade. But, um, yeah, I mean, I still think that Dame is, is really good tonight. I think that they can keep the game close still. Um, they showed to be really competitive even with no Giannis. And, I mean, getting Chris Middleton back, definitely helps them a ton because they need that extra scoring. And I actually don't think that Milton is like the craziest option. 6.2K, his minutes are definitely going to be topped out around 25 to 27, I would assume. They're going to ramp him up pretty slowly. But in uh, 25 minutes last game against Phoenix, he put up 38.25 DK points. Really big. He sees the biggest usage bump with no Giannis, uh, up 11% uh, this season with Giannis off the court this season. And um, 42, 42 DK points per 30. 36 minutes. So I think that he's a fine option, 6.2K as well. And then Bobby Porras is kind of the guy you just always play when Dame is out. Definitely a tough matchup. Uh, Celtics really good, just all around defense, really good against front court guys. But he's averaging almost 43 points in four games without Giannis this season. So I think that he's still a really strong option. And then like Malik Beasley and Jay Crowder are, are guys you can keep in your player pool, but not too excited about them. And then uh, Boston side of things, not too excited about them right now unless we get news that multiple of these guys were out. Um, but, yeah, normally try to attack the Bucks with guards, but 7.5K for White, a little bit too much, 6.8 too much for Drew if they're uh, if the team's fully healthy. So not really looking to these Boston guys tonight. How crazy do you, like, do you think it'd be if you like Dame to go, like, Tatum and Dame? You're hoping the game stays close. I mean, Tatum's – you can do any, like Jalen Brown or Porzingis. I think Tate, I'm sorry about that. I don't know why my alarm was on at 12.55. Um, I guess you don't really like Tatum too much, so you're probably going to say no. I think it'd be a little interesting, though. Like, if Dane keeps it close, I mean, I think 9.9K is a good price for Tatum. 
So I guess that's what I've seen. I'm not really going to get to Dane much. He's going to be popular, though. He's 9-1. Definitely makes sense without Giannis. I just think there is some downside, too. If they sell out against Dame, if this game gets out of hand, and point guard, he's just point guard eligible. There's a lot of other good plays. Maybe I'll have him one or four or something. I'll probably cap him at 25%, though, today um, and get more Tyrese. Yeah, good breakdown there. Monitor Celtics news. That could change. If Brown, Hauser, if all those guys are out, then I would like Tatum. Then I think Porzingis would be interesting if we do get that news. 730 Eastern, though, Rio is not expecting it. Let's get to the lot better game at 730 Eastern. Those have bought risk again, though. Sacramento Kings, Toronto Raptors, 233 and a half total. Kings, 11-point favorites. No Kevin Herter side. No quickly, no RJ Barrett. Man, this is the game that's getting all the ownership. Some of the most exp- or most popular plays on the slate. John Say Porter, who's going to be getting the start at center. He has been starting and playing good ball, playing like low 20s minutes, 21, 24, 41, 24 the past four games. Center, again, isn't great on this slate. Wara, 3.8K. He's going to be popular. Bruce Brown, Grady Dick, I mean, all these guys, Sabonis, Fox, Olinick. You go top to bottom. These guys are way too cheap for the role. Toronto's shorthanded. I mean, you know where the minutes are going on both sides. So how many is too many? Who are you going to group away? Who are your favorites? I'll say my favorite of all the chalk, I think. I don't know. Monk's been so good to me, man, at 6'3". I love, love Monk in this spot. But Jante and Wara, they fit a lot of – Keon Ellis is definitely my least favorite value in this. When we're talking 4K, Porter, Wara, Keon Ellis, when talking who's going to get ownership – Kian Ellis is definitely my least favorite. Porter just feels pretty safe. War is going to chalk. I don't know, man. Looks like pretty good uh, pretty good chalk to me, and that's why I think getting different at a spend-up or mid-tier or something like that uh, is, is the way to go. Um, yeah, take it away however you want. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be a lot of ownership in this game. Yeah, um, I just wanted to clarify. I don't think that – Porter is going to be starting, nor he hasn't really been starting. Just getting the backup center minutes and a little bit okay. of minutes That's alongside it. Kelly Linick. But oh, okay, what? Why? Um, my bad on that. Kelly O's minutes have come down the past couple. Is and Jante's coming up a little just because he's playing more and they're splitting it. Or yeah, they're they're just splitting it. Um, I believe those games blew out as well. So yeah, they lost by 15 to Orlando last time, and then only 10 the time before that. But um, yeah, I mean they're they're okay. just kind of. Kelly Olenek is kind of just like topped out around 28 to 32. I just don't think you're ever going to see the um, 36s out of him. So they're going to, they're going to play Porter um, the, all the backup center minutes and then a, a couple minutes alongside Olenek as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is a definitely situation is very hard to get away from because it's a great game environment for one and both teams. Uh, well, I mean, the, the spend ups are really good on Sacramento. They're a little bit shorthanded with no, Kevin Herter and then Sasha Vizenkov got ruled out, which doesn't really change too much. But um, obviously Toronto going to be without RJ Barrett and Emmanuel quickly already without Scotty Barnes, Jakob Pertl. So they're going to look really good. Um, I'll start with the Sacramento side because I really like the spot for Sabonis. Um, the Toronto Raptors defense just been terrible since January 1st. Talk about it all the time, bottom two in the league since the 1st of January. They're playing a lot faster as well, getting giving up more points in transition. Um, and Mike Brown last game said that they wanted to get the team going more in transition. So I think that we could see, you know, a lot more possessions in this one, which is which just means more fantasy points. So so bonus really good here. Toronto bottom five room defense scoring this month. Um, they're giving up a ton of offensive rebounds with Kelly Linick and John T. Porter down low. We saw what Jalen Duran did to them a couple of games ago. Sabonis, one of the better re- rebounders in the league, got the 50 plus game double double streak going as well. Um, yeah, I mean, there's not much to say. I think that he just crushes in this matchup and is not too crazy high owned, which I think he should be a little bit higher. Um, probably want to be max one Sabonis and Fox tonight, just with it them being almost 20k in salary. Uh, I do think that both of them could pay off, but um, I mean, if Sabonis hits like 60 to 70, Fox hits like 50. There's probably a lot of guys in that same point guard range that could top De'Aaron Fox, like we mentioned with Halliburton, with Cade, with Damian Lillard. There's a couple of guys in later games, so I don't really want to uh, restrict myself too much with the with those two in the same lineup. But I think they're both in, in great spots. Fox has been a little bit more passive as of late. The drives come down a little bit, but this is definitely a spot I can see him putting up a big score. Um, put it going up against Bruce Brown, really good matchup for him. 
just yeah, Toronto's getting beat all over the place. So I, I love Fox tonight as well. Malik Monk is really good. Played a ton of minutes last game, filling in for Kevin Herter, who got ruled out mid-game. Played 34 regulation minutes. Always has huge upside coming off the bench. Five fifty, uh, five forty DK point plus games in nine games lately. So yeah, upside is definitely there. Um, think Keegan Murray is a good spot. Toronto getting beat by three pointers as of late as well. So yeah, I mean you can make a case for a lot of these guys. I'm probably just gonna be max one. Murray and Barnes, Max one, Sabonis, Fox. Um, I think I'd be okay if I had Fox and Monk together. And then Toronto side of things, um, yeah, I mean, Kelly Linick is going to have a really big role. He was kind of the de facto point guard for this team last game, last couple of games, um, or games that quickly has missed. So we kind of expect a similar role. He's been the type of guy that can fill up the stat sheet in multiple ways. Matchup is not – uh, not the worst. Sabonis not the greatest defender, but he does bring a lot of foul risk. So I think that there is some downside to Olenek. I mean, I have a, I've been fading Olenek at the ownership lately just because the price tag is not – it's not like a super strong value. He projects really well, but hasn't really had a performance where it really killed you for not playing him. So I'm probably going to take another underweight stance on uh, Kelly Olenek tonight. Um, I think that Trent and Bruce Brown look pretty good. Trent got the big scoring upside, but 6.1K seems – about at his ceiling, but he's been scoring the ball really well lately. Scoring is very high variance, so it can come and go at, in a game's notice. So, yeah, I don't know. You have to choose what you want to do with him. I think Bruce Brown is pretty strong at 5.6K, mainly because he's got the, sh the small forward eligibility. Going to be running the point tonight, so I don't have any issues with him. Not too into Grady Dick. Um, just the scoring's come down a lot lately, but should play a ton of minutes. And then, yeah, Porter and Noir, I think, are really the two best values on this Probably on the slate and definitely in this game. Um, but a couple pivots, I think, if in the same the same game, same team, uh, Jalen McDaniels, he's been playing a little bit more minutes when the team's shorthanded, only 3.4K. And then Jamias Ramsey, um, I think he was kind of on his way to a bigger game last time, been playing 19, 18, 19 minutes. Don't think that he starts here tonight, but he's only 3.2K. And clearly in the rotation, if the game blows out, I think that he's definitely out there. So I don't think that he's the craziest play, but um thinking about groupings i probably want to be like max two of nawara oshai mcdaniels and and dick um and then maybe like a max one of bruce brown and ramsey yeah that makes sense right now i mean ramsey's gonna be he's gonna be really low on so i guess you can use him as a pivot to some other chalk abaji's definitely my least favorite that's going to get some ownership, I think. Man, he just doesn't really do anything, it seems. Yeah. Like, Grady Dick, at least when he's out there, he's shooting. I mean, 20% usage, at least the past two games. Minutes are somewhat capped. I mean, I think if people game log watch, he could be even a little lower owned than people project. I think I'd be fine taking a shot on him at 4-7. Uh, yeah, I know I don't like Abaji. Ramsey's going to be low owned. What's your thoughts on him? You, you think – yeah, like you think he's got 25, 30, 30 in his range? Uh, fantasy points or minutes? Yeah, no, fantasy points. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it comes down to how many minutes he's going to play, really. Um, I don't know if he's got the 30 in him, but maybe 20 to 25. He's gotten 20 against Orlando just two games ago, so I think that he's got it in him. And he's kind of been if getting – This game blows out, too, like at 11, like he – because I mean, there's so much ownership going in this game. A guy that you know yeah. will get some normal minutes that's basically free that's going to take away. Like if he does well, some, someone's busting. A couple guys are busting on their team, and you can get a whole leg up. So, I, yeah, what were you going to say? Oh, no, I was just going to say that he's been getting uh, – he was getting minutes even when the team was a little bit healthier. He got minutes against Orlando a couple of games ago when they had, uh, they had quickly. And then even last game – quickly was still in there and he got some minutes. So I think that he's kind of uh, kind of here to stay in terms of getting rotation minutes tonight. So jonte has got center eligibility. What's going on, by the way, Jake, what's going on, Charlie? Hope you guys are doing well. Always good to see both of you guys in here a lot. What's your thoughts on, would you max one Kelly Owen Porter? They're both going to get a good bit of ownership. People are definitely going to play them together. Power forward eligibility for Kelly O center for Porter. Is there merit to doing that? I don't think you need to do it just because Kelly's got the power forward eligibility. If he was just center, then I wouldn't want them together. But um, yeah, him having power forward just 
frees up a lot of spots. So I think that I'd be okay with both of them together. And then last two things. A, are you going to set a max? Like, I've seen optimals have, like, six in this game. Some will even have seven. Some five. Like, it is getting jammed because there's so many. So bonus, one of the best spends on the slate point per dollar up top. So much good value. Like, Bruce Brown, Monk. Gary Trent, Keegan Murray, they're going to play a bunch of minutes. Like just in every range, there's pieces. How many are you, are, would, are you going to make a rule on either side of Max? How many would you be okay with? And then Keon Ellis, talk about him a little more. You love point guard. He projects pretty well. Um, but, man, it feels like you can't get point guard wrong. He just did, did come off a 33 uh, or a 29 DK game, 7% usage. Like I just don't know if I can use a point guard spot. When it feels like that is his, his ceiling. So, yeah, at Keon Ellis, then any max rules in this game. Yeah, I mean, Keon had – he had six stocks, five blocks, and a steal. I mean, he's he's a really good defender. He's getting those, you know, those steal numbers pretty consistently, but it's definitely not something that you want to bank on in terms of fantasy production. Um, but, yeah, like you said, the, the point guard spot is not one that I want to really spend down too much on, and you can't miss on it. So, Keon – He's been really good as a starter, not that great as a fantasy uh, fantasy scorer, though, only averaging 20.3 points in games as a starter this season. So didn't really mention him just because I don't really have a ton of interest. I'd rather just find the money to spend up at point guard and spend down at other positions. Um, in terms of max in this game, I probably would, would want to be like a max. I think three is fine on the Toronto side. And then um, – you could probably do three on Sacramento side as well, but I'm probably going to end up with no more than two because I'm going to have max one, uh, max one of Sabonis, Fox, and then I'd be okay if I had like Sabonis and Monk or Fox and Monk or whatever one of those guys and Keegan Murray. Um, yeah, so probably probably two on the Sacramento side, three on Toronto. Like it, Jason like Keon's going to get the minutes though. He will. You can play him at three seven. I mean, I don't think it's the worst play, but he's going to come with a little ownership too. I like TJ. A lot more um, for 800 more is how is where I'd go if I am punting point guard. We'll keep it rolling next game on the slate. We spent a lot of time on that game, but by far of the eight games, that is the premier game of the slate. This game at 8 p.m. Eastern before the last three at 10 Eastern. Utah Jazz, Rio's Utah Jazz taking on OKC Thunder. Rio's OT, uh, Utah Jazz, very big dogs, 15 and a half. What kind of team are they sending out here right now? 232 and a half total. I mean, man, John Collins questionable. Markinen's out. Jordan Clarkson's out. OKC healthy. I mean, talk about point guard, SGA. If this game somehow stays close, I mean, I guess I'll throw it to you on this because I don't have interest on the Utah side. I guess maybe if John Collins were out, like a Walker Kessler at 5 2, Hendricks 5 1. I don't know if you can talk me into Keontae or Sexton as low home pieces. But does SGA, like, can he get there in 30 minutes and be enough on the slate? Or at point guard, again, you can't miss. Do you think you're going to need 60 or something from him? And then, yeah, Jalen Williams, Chet. I would know I want to be max one all of them. But I don't know if your Jazz can keep this game close enough where they get the last run. So what do you see it? How do you see it going down? No, you, you spelled it out perfectly. I pretty much echo the same things that you said about this game. I don't think that the Jazz can keep it close. Um, they're going to be running out a – JV roster tonight with, uh, I mean, I would expect Collins to probably miss this one too. They've been pretty cautious with him lately. And uh, obviously he's got injured because he got absolutely demolished on the dunk by Anthony Edwards. Um, but yeah, I mean, I would have interest in some of the, really just the bigs in this game on the Utah side of things because we have seen OKC be very bad against opposing centers this season, mainly because their rebounding is so bad. So I could see Walker Kessler at 5-2 putting up a pretty big score. If uh, Collins were to miss, and then I mean, even Ir Omar Yurt seven at three point four k would be, I think he'd project really well. And if you're telling me I'm splitting center minutes with uh, Yurt seven, eighteen to twenty is all you need out of him at three point four k, that would be really good. So those are the only two guys that would remain in my play pool now. If Collins were to miss, if he's in, not considering considering any of these guys. I mean, like Keontae George, he's shown really big ceiling at times. The shooting is. Not really been there for him lately. Minutes are coming down a little bit, but um, OKC, pretty big three-point funnel this season, especially catch-and-shoot guys. So I think that he makes a little bit of sense. But, yeah, it's the point guard position that you don't really want to – can't whip on, so I don't know if I'll take too many shots on Keontae. 
Um, and then OKC, I mean, yeah, this is a great spot for SGA, great spot for Jalen Williams, especially those two, uh, with the Jazz just being the dead last in transition defense. I believe they're dead last in defensive rating this month. Really giving up a ton of three-pointers as of late. But, um, yeah, I just – I don't know. If we're not getting – if I'm not getting 35, 36 minutes out of SGA, I think that he could – score really well probably is like a lock for 50 to 53 but 10.4k uh the point guard spot is very good tonight so i don't think that i'll have too much of him um as much as i love the matchup as much as i think that he has a really good game i just you just can't whip and he's only averaging 49.3 points in three games against utah it's not because he hasn't played well it's just the minutes haven't really been been there for him because they just the jazz can't keep it close um but i, I think that Jalen williams much less um opportunity cost for him at power forward and he's his usage has looked really good he's kind of commanding the second unit at times they're staggering him away from sj in the second quarter and that's really helped him um from a fantasy perspective transition scoring is really good for him he's second on the team in transition scoring behind sga who i mentioned is third in the league in transition scoring this season um but yeah i think i, I would prefer to get down to Jalen williams at 6.9k rather than spending up to at 10.4k uh only point guard eligible for sj and then, yeah, Max, one of all of the big three for them. Uh, don't really have a strong lean on Chet. I think that he's fine. 7.2K is, is a good price tag for him, but don't really have a strong take. Yeah, we're – I mean, I, I agree. I don't even love Dame today. Don't like Dame too much, especially at ownership. But I prefer Dame over SGA, prefer Sabonis there. I don't see myself getting there. I did look at Jalen Williams too, but it's like, man – like he, he's been getting 35 minutes. Like I know he's getting 35 minutes. I love him in this spot. If you go 28, 27 minutes, he can get there, but the risk reward on this eight game slates, people are putting up big scores today. Like you need a lot of flames to be shipping 15 and a half. I mean, this game could get away early. He would be my favorite though. Jake does like Chet. Um, I guess I wouldn't mind if I landed on Chet or something like that. Center's not that great, but not a game I want too much of. Walker Kessler would be my favorite. Assuming John Collins does miss. We got three games left on the slate. All three of these at 10 p.m. Eastern. And yeah, I will shout out that Yurt 7 call, though, because no one, I mean, he will be 1% owned if that. 127 people watching, add a couple hundred on playback, whatever. Mm -hmm. Like, even a court, not even 1% of them will click that name because it feels gross. Doesn't project well. So, yeah, that can win some, win, win someone a lot of cheese. What's going on, Danny? Took Let down me, three uh, single game contests oh, last sorry, night. Yeah, awesome stuff, nice. Danny. Love to see that. Go ahead. Uh, I just want to touch on the Jalen Williams thing really quick from a blowout perspective because the way that his rotation works, I think that he probably still sees low 30s, uh, maybe like okay. 34 because he plays uh, – checks out about halfway through the first quarter, plays most of the second quarter, and then um, same thing in the third, checks out about – halfway through and then plays the full fourth in, in games that are close. So, I mean, you're still probably getting five to six minutes out of him in the, in the fourth quarter, regardless of the score. So I think that he's kind of, I think he's still pretty safe from a minute standpoint. Say less then. I like him. So you think they're up 20, uh, they're up 20 or something. He'll be, he'll still go in, close it up. Yeah. Um, not close it, but I think that not like, close they it, would get they it. need to be up by like 30 for him to not play that fourth quarter. Say less. I like him then for sure. Um, yeah, sign me up. He's probably one of my favorite plays now on the slate. If you're giving me that against the Utah, I mean, no defense. I, I really like Jalen Williams. So good shout on that. What's going on, Mark? Three games left on the slate. If you want this great info, like great, even though when Rio isn't on the shows, of course, not this weekend, he'll be at the live final trying to win a million bucks, but he has a slate plan, very in-depth, upper tier, mid tier, lower tier, writes a, writes a blurb about all the players. Someone gets gets ruled out, makes updates, always in the Discord. You have his GPP core report for single entry on the site, showdown content. It'll be up tonight as well. Make sure to check it out. Projections updated throughout the nights. And again, not just NBA, PGA that locks tomorrow, MMA, NHL, NASCAR, MLB starting in a week. Head over to ShipTheNation.com. Use that promo code MAYO. Gets you 10% off. Three games left, Rio. I mean, we talked about the best games on the slate for sure. I'm not sure how long these will take for me. 76ers, Phoenix Suns to start it off, 223 total. These are all big boy spreads. I mean, this slate is all pretty much big boy spreads outside of that Heat-Cavs game. 
Uh, Suns nine point favorites. Injury report, nothing on the Sun side. Philly, Tobias is questionable. I'll throw it to you right away because all I have interest in really, Jake mentioned it earlier, is Tyrese Maxey. I really like Maxey too. 8.8K. I like him over Dame for ownership discount. Tyrese is there. Cade, I like McConnell. Like you're, I already know where my point cards are falling into place. Sign me up for Maxi for sure. Do you think Tobias plays? Because um, I'd still be fine with Maxi if he does. I'd like him even more if he's out. So there's upside there, and he'll be pretty low owned, I think. So yeah, take this game away, but it's just Maxi or bust really for me. Yeah, um, Tobias Harris was present at shoot around, I believe, was the wording they used. So did not participate. That does not just because he was there does not mean he's a lock to play. Um, I think the wording definitely matters. So if he if he misses, I don't really think that it matters too much from for Maxi uh, if he's in or out because I think the role is going to be the same for him. It more so just brings in like Kelly Oubre, but he healed a little bit into play, um, which I mean you're probably getting the really low owned, and I think that the matchup doesn't seem that great on paper. But the Suns, I mean, they just gave up what 18 first half three pointers to the Bucks last game. They have starting to give up a really like a lot of. Uh, three pointers as of late outside of that game. Um, so I think those guys make a little bit of sense as like pivots off of, you know, the Malik Monks, um, whoever is getting ownership in the low 5Ks if you're interested in Buddy Healed. But yeah, right, right now it's just Max your bus for me. I think that you laid it out really good. He's a really sharp pivot off of all the chalk condensing around Tyrese Halliburton, around Damian Lillard. Um, and uh, the Suns been a team to attack with opposing point guards all season long, been very vulnerable to lead guards. They only have. The greatest on-ball defenders, Grayson Allen, is okay, but he's about as good as it gets. So, I, yeah, I, I like Maxi a lot here. 30, uh, 30, exactly 30 points in three straight games, two rebounds away from a triple-double last game. So I think that he's a really strong option at 8.8K. Um, and then all the Suns guys, I think you're kind of just playing them to get contrarian. I don't really see much from a matchup standpoint. The Sixers defense been getting much better as of lately after struggling for a while, especially around the rim. So I think that like KD at 9.4K is okay, but with a fully healthy team, do I think that he pays off that tag over a guy like Tatum over, you know, spending up for Sabonis or something like that? No, probably not. Same thing with Booker, just a kind of a pivot around the point guards because he's always well, got point guard shooting guard, which is a little bit nice. But um, I guess if you're like paying down for TJ McConnell or Keon Ellis, consider Devin Booker, but don't love anything about the match for him. Sixers, I guess, are kind of weaker with their on-ball defense. So, oh, shit. Asar Thompson done for the season with the blood clot. Not good. Sketch. Damn. Um, yeah, that sucks. But, yeah, Devin Booker, I think he's – yeah, I don't really have a strong lean on these guys. I think Beal is is okay. He's playing really well lately, but I don't think you're paying 7.2K over – for Beal over Malik Monk, who's got the same upside, if not better upside. Same thing for Karis LeVert. Uh, cheaper and probably the same, if not better, upside. So, yeah, these guys are just contrarian options for me. Don't have a lot of interest. Yeah. No, I don't think it'd be crazy to use one of them. Max one, chalky build. You throw one of them in, you hope they nuke. But Max, you really are bust for me. I like to these two questions quick. I usually get crushed in the late night hammer games, three tonight. Any recommendation how to roster guys if the early games don't pop? Regardless, I mean, just – these, I will say it's always slate dependent. These last three games don't look really great on paper. I know most of my teams will be built early, but yeah, I mean, if you know pretty much uh, if you have, if you're saying if you have a lot of late spots for your roster, the early games, if they do really well and you know you can't ship, you're just trying to hopefully min cash to so just play what you think a cash lineup or if you have to make a pivot or two. If all the games bust and you have a lot of spots open, then yeah, you know where, I mean, you know that that doesn't take too many points to get to first place. You might not have to make as many pivots if all the chalk busted. You have to know about ownership. I mean, there's a lot of variables that go into that. But I wouldn't really worry about, like, I'm always in first place and someone in the late night hammer always passes me. Like, don't change your roster or build like that um, to get late night hammers to force them in just because you like having them. Like, these last three games, I, I don't like these last three games. So I'll have a lot of early games today. And three, I don't know if you saw this, but DK says participated. Underdogs had presence. Who knows in yeah. the world? But I'll assume he plays. We still like Maxi though. I think I trust Underdog a little bit more than than DK yeah. reporters. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna go with uh, what Underdog said. But yeah, I don't know. It's it really doesn't change too much. Like I don't think that you're backloading for Tobias Harris news. 
No, for sure. None of these games. Next game on the slate, I don't have really anything in this one. Memphis Grizzlies, Golden State Warriors, 219 total. Warriors 11-point favorites. Draymond's questionable. And uh, Moses Moody's questionable for your Golden State side. Memphis, Santi Aldama questionable. Luke Kennard out. Vince Williams doubtful. I guess my only interest really is Trace, Trace Jackson Davis. Center, 4.9K. Do you have a lean on Draymond? Because... I mean, I think Trace Jackson's still fine if he comes off the bench. And if he did start for Draymond, I definitely would like him. So, yeah, I guess really Trace Jackson or Bust, what do you see? And do you have a lean on Draymond? Uh, not a strong lean on Draymond. He's been been playing through the injuries. So if he really is, you know, if he is banged up, then I think that a game against Memphis makes some sense. But, um, no, nah, wait, the uh, – sorry, Golden State, they need wins right now. So they – can't really afford to give guys the night off. So I'm expecting the play. I'm expecting full minutes out of everybody that is listed healthy. So yeah, I'm expecting him in, but yeah, if Trace Jackson, Dave, or if Draymond's out, Trace, Trace Jackson Davis, who is already projecting as a pretty solid value at 4.9 K, it can only get better for him. So I don't think that you're running away to play TJD. If Draymond is ruled in, cause he, he looks pretty strong. He's got a really good role off the bench regardless um, probably going to need his size and his defense a little bit for Jaron Jackson Jr. tonight. So, yeah, I think I think that he's pretty solid as a value option tonight. Um, <clears throat> but I think that Steph kind of falls into the same bucket as like a pivot off of all that point guard chalk in that same range because he's posted really good usage rates in his return to the lineup. I don't think that he's really restricted at all from a minutes perspective. Played 34 against L.A., played 33 last game against the Knicks. Um I think that he makes some sense. I haven't really seen the the really big Steph Nuke game, but we, we know that he's still got that in him. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I always like Steph, especially coming with low ownership. And the Memphis Grizzlies, they were their interior defense is back to being really good with Jaron Jackson down low. But with that kind of comes with them being a little bit more of a three-point funnel style defense. So that kind of lines up perfectly for Steph. So I like him as a pivot as well to uh, all those 9K point guard options. Um, only guys that really have interest in on the grizzly side of things. I mean, I'll say Desmond Bain just because he's had a really good role. The touch time has been up the last few games. Uh, pretty encouraging that he got up to 37 minutes last game. That was in the overtime loss against Sacramento, but still 32 regulation minutes for Bain, who has who's leading the team in touch time over the last two games. Um, a little bit more upside for minutes as he gets healthier and healthier. So we've seen him have really big ceilings at time, uh, especially with a, a really shorthanded Grizzlies team. So I like Bain a little bit. I think JJJ is just okay. Not a great matchup if uh, Draymond's in, but if he misses, much better matchup for him. The role has kind of remained the same. So I don't have a strong lead. I think that he's just okay. And then Gigi Jackson, 6K, looking to get some ownership. I'd be okay getting away from that just because he is is young and we see him uh, really struggle to shoot at times. So I'm okay getting away from that. Really just Bain and then Steph and TJD, TJD in this game. Steph, Hal Burton, Maxi, rank them. They're all in that AK or and Dame and Dame. They're all in that nine one to eight seven range. Well, I guess we got to talk uh, toss Fox in there too because he's nine K. Um, to but me, if, it's assuming you play if you're playing Fox, that's no Sabonis because you made that yeah. rule just so everyone out there knows. But yep, toss him in there. Yeah, for me, it would be Dame Tyrese. Fox, Maxi, Curry. Okay. Yeah, man, man, it's tough for sure. Yeah. Ownership will probably go Dame. Uh, I don't know. Tyrese, I think it'll go Dame and Tyrese up there. And then Steph will be the lowest. And then, yeah, I guess there's just Maxi and, and uh, who's the other one I was just missing? Fox. Fox. Those two will be there. So, yeah, it definitely will be Dame, Tyrese. Staff will be low. The other two will be somewhat low, too. Yeah, not much for me. Trace Jackson Davis in this game. The game log against Steph is just so hurtful. But, man, like, I like him at home, too. The price takes fair. The usage looks good the last two games. Like, you can definitely tell yourself a story on Steph. He falls down the list for me, too. So, I wouldn't mind getting one or something. I don't think I'll be too exposed. I like Trace Jackson, though. With uh, Yeah, if Draymond misses, he has even more upside. Not everyone will be able to get him. And Bain's low-owned. Hey, I'll take your shout on that. He might be the 
Alex Caruso for three thousand dollars more play, but I like that ownership mm-hmm. will be really low. What's going on, Beetle Bump? One game left on the slate, Rio. Great job. Last game, Los Angeles Clippers, Portland Trail Blazers. We have two sixteen total. Clippers twelve and a half point favorites. Norman Powell, Terrence Mann questionable for the Clippers on the Portland side. Yeah, before we came on, you mentioned it. Simon's midday downgrade. So he's now questionable. Thibel's questionable. Jeremy Grant's doubtful. I mean, man, if Simons is out, they're already without Jeremy Grant. Banton, Scoots, they'll probably start aside each other like they did before. You can tell me if you think I'm wrong. That's what happened last game, though. 5-4, solid price take for Scoot. 5-6 for Banton. I don't know. Um, it's not a game if I knew Simons was in. It's not. A, I don't really want to get to the Portland side much, but this midday downgrade – It'll be interesting. I still don't think ownership goes crazy on any of these guys. And then, yeah, you got to mention DeAndre Ayton. Um, the air, what the air mattress narrative or whatever gets on a real bed and the and the dude's hooping or what? Uh, yeah. yeah. So what's going on, Lachlan? Yeah, take this last game away. Yeah, yeah I'll start with uh, Ayton and then I'll break down the Simon stuff. But yeah, Ayton just been absolutely crushing this month since he got on a real bed, uh, averaging 26.8 points, 15 rebounds, one assist, playing 38 minutes, 50.7 DK points in the month of March. The matchup got a lot softer versus the Clippers because they have really been struggling lately. Clippers are um, bottom nine in defense, defensive rating this month. They're giving up more three-pointers, but even their rim defense and their rebounding rates have been really bad as of late. So I think Aiden is a really, really strong option, 8.2K. Um, just kind of buying into the the narrative that he's turned it around. So, yeah, I think that he's really strong. And, I mean, the it can only get better for him as well if, if Ant misses because Ant is a high-usage guy. So more of the offense going to have to run through um, run through Aiden. And I actually think that they have a good chance to keep the game close, even with the spread indicating double digits. I mean, the Clippers have been really struggling lately. They just got beat by the Hawks, who are shorthanded as well. So I think the Blazers have a – okay chance to keep the game close, even with how bad their offense has been lately. Um, but, yeah, I mean, the Simon stuff, midday downgrade, probably – I feel like we've been burned by him a couple times this season where he gets midday downgrade and then plays. But, I mean, man, you could really get paid off in a big way if you if you uh, buy into him missing tonight because Ben has been a guy that's just been – I mean, he's been crushing lately in games where the team shorthanded put up 46 against New Orleans in 42 minutes – put a 43 against Toronto, 52 against Houston. I just don't think there's many guys in that range that have the same upside as him. So if you really are buying into Simon's missing, you could you, know, you get paid off in a big way uh, for Ben. And I don't really think that Scoot is worth too much of a look. If you want like 30 points out of him, that's fine. But he's just – I think he's one of the worst shooters in the league right now. Um, I'm not even saying that as like an opinion. I think that's like actually fact-based. Um yeah, so those are the guys. Simons was out. He had a 36% use his last game. 20, 28, 27, 20. Like, what about him in that range with Banton? Like, or you already talked about Banton, obviously, but they're right in that same range. Compare him to, well, I guess, who else is on the slate? In that range, let's see. Scoot's just point guard out. I'm not even going to talk you into him. There's so many good ones. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Banton that's shooting enough. guard, which is nice, too. Yep, so, yeah. Exactly. I will say, though, man, I even if. Simon's plays, I think Banton's fine. I even think Scoot's fine. Like, I know you don't like him. I don't think he's the craziest play, but, yeah, I am I like these guys. Um, I mean, especially Banton, but I, I'll, I'll probably be having at least him in one team, maybe two, because if Simon's is in, he's not the worst play. Uh, you don't love him in this spot, but plenty of these other guys can bust. And if he's out, like you said, the upside's there. The ownership can't be as much. Because people aren't going to have roster spots open really in these last three. I already like Aiton. You think it could stay close? Yeah, I mean, I'm just talking out loud. But, yeah, I mean, it's, it's lined it up. I like Portland. Well, I actually – so I – Simons was going to make the slate plan. Uh, I actually liked him tonight just because the usage has been good for him. And it's a good spot for three-point shooters. But if you're telling me that role is being vacated and it's just being absorbed by Benton, who is, what, 2K cheaper – I think you have to have – I mean, he's going to project, like, one of the best values. He, You can put him at, like, 32, 34 um, in your projections and then just get more of him. And there's probably enough pivots around him to to make it work as well. Uh, maybe not if you only have him in shooting guard, but, I mean, he's, you know, mid-5Ks, 
if you just look in the util spot the last three games, like who do we have in that range? You got Gigi Jackson, who's not the worst play. Like Pods is not not the worst, same eligibility. Um, if you're just talking util, then like Zubak, I think in a good matchup is fine. Uh, Wiggins, it, Trace Jackson Davis. Cheaper. Conchar is cheaper if you need a 2v2 as guard forward eligibility. Yeah, so like there, there's ways to make it work where you're not, you're not, uh, what's the word? Like you're not just like left, left out you're to die if you have him. Yeah, because there's a lot. There's three games in the late slate, so you can, you could definitely make it work. Yeah, and I don't even. Um, again, I don't even think he's the craziest play, even if. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, if it didn't work out, you're not, you're not dead. Is pretty much what I'm saying. He's still yeah. gonna get, he's still gonna be on the floor, and he's still gonna be. Very involved, like he usually is. I mean, back to his Toronto days. Anytime he got minutes or they were short, he put he puts up big scores. He's he's a hooper. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But anything else in this one? Uh, no, just touching the Clippers side. I think I'd be a max one of the big three, and Paul George would be my favorite. Um, the ball handling role has been really good for him. Kind of trying to get him more acclimated to being this the the lead guy in in the playoffs. I think that he's in a pretty good spot here tonight. So I like him the best, and I I don't think Zubak is the worst play at five point five k. Good matchup, Portland. One of the worst room defenses, worst, uh, one of the worst teams in DVP wise versus center. So I, I like those two guys a little bit. Yeah, I mean, if you have them in the util and Banton or if Simons is in, you can just go Zubak if you feel a little better with it. But again, I still think they're relatively close. Yeah, great stuff. Not much more to add. I do like Aiton a lot in the Simons stuff, mainly Banton. I like Scoot a little more than you, but with how good point guard is and. Yeah, I guess I like Maxi and Steph in the late game at point card too. So if I had a couple like two v twos or something, I wouldn't be surprised um, if I dropped down to Scoot. But yeah, I mean, great breakdown for sure. Sacramento, Toronto, a broad slate overview to wrap it up. All the ownerships going to Sacramento, Toronto. Talked about a lot of good point guard plays, mainly in that nine like Dane, Fox, Steph, Maxi. Um, ownership in the point guard range relatively spread out. Cade's going to get some ownership. Tyrese is going to get some. Dame's going to get some. I think the pivots are the Stephs, are the Maxis. Sabonis is going to be one of the most popular spends. Yeah, I mean, mainly just keep coming back to that Toronto-Sacramento game and a bunch of Q tags out there. Like, we think Boston and Jalen Brown and stuff play, but if all of them are ruled out on Boston, the whole slate changes with Tatum with some value there, et cetera. So projections updated throughout the night. Our content, any changes will be in yellow, of course. And, uh, yeah, use that promo code right here. Use that promo code Mayo. Get you 10% off any package. PGA locks tomorrow morning. MMA this weekend. NASCAR, MLB in nine days. NHL, so many sports. Trying to uh, trying to count on my fingers how many we got. Rio, final words for the people before you get on out of here. Slate plan already up at ShippingNation.com. Uh, if you mean because the flag is vertical and not horizontal, the only reason it is because this thing is like, 12 feet long and there's just not enough room on my wall for it to be vertical if you mean because it's backwards that's because the camera is mirrored so don't blame me for having it the way that it is but that's um, what i was i I was trying to read that comment when i was doing the break because i but yeah it was too much for me going on but i didn't know what do you don't worry man it's all right i i promise doesn't mean any disrespect no love love america um yeah no i uh (laughs) usa uh, USA, baby. Um, yeah, I don't have much to say. I think that we let it out pretty good. Um, tons of pivots in the point guard range. So you got to really pick and choose which one you want to play tonight. I still don't know right now what I'm going to do in my main team. Definitely going to be play one of those five guys that we mentioned and probably one of Sabonis. So if it's Sabonis, then definitely not Fox. And that makes the decision a little bit easier for me. But yeah, still, still a lot of time to figure it out. Still a lot of stuff can change in the slate. I mean, this is definitely a slate you got to be by your computer for sure for the first hour and then you could take you know take a little break hour and a half break go get some food go for a walk whatever and then be back for the 7 p.m games uh 10 p.m games eastern but yeah all around good stuff um and then i'll catch all you guys next tuesday no quick hit for me this weekend no live show for me on friday so you got the guys nades and hamwich taking over for me Absolutely, yeah. Like you didn't mention, it does great breakdown. An hour window, like we mentioned earlier, then you have two hours off. Come back for the three games: FanDuel and DraftKings, all 8 p.m. Eastern. My player pulls like 50 players. Yeah, I mean it's definitely one. Eight games, 
It's a lot of good plays around. So I don't feel like I feel like that's a solid number. We appreciate those words. Nate D, hit that like on the way out. We do appreciate it. And good luck to you this week in Rio. He's going to be off for the weekend. Don't be blowing up his phone. Today's his last day grinding. Tomorrow he'll have the slate plan up. Changes will be made by all of us. Again, Nades, Ham, myself, all the guys, Hoop Tambo, we'll all be helping out in the NBA streets. Good luck this weekend, man. Good luck to everyone else out there watching. Somebody ship that 250000 For real, I'm Title Town. Be safe. Have a good night.